Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and the woman, the woman, and between her seed and between your seed and her seed. We read in the gospel, Jesus says, the Pharisees were the seed of Satan. The Pharisees were the religious leaders. Therefore, don't be ignorant. Because if the seed of Satan will be operating against the seed of the woman, it will be through religious leaders. These are the ones that have established institutions and churches promulgating a false gospel which says, let not the woman speak. Finding strength strengthen the book of Corinthians and the book of Timothy and misconstruing why Paul wrote what he wrote. If you really want to understand, get this book. If you're a woman in ministry, you can't Minister in ignorance. And he shall bruise your head. And you shall bruise his heel. Let's read it again. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. And, so Jesus is speaking to the serpent. And between your seed, the serpent's seed, and her seed, the woman's seed. And he so the seed is a he. He's talking about Christ. Shall bruise your head. Who? The serpent said. And you. Who? The serpent. Shall bruise his heel. This is what theologians call proto evangelism. Now this is my commentary on Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Paul tells us Jesus is the seed. And the Gospels tells us that on the cross, Colossians chapter 2, when Jesus hung there, when he was being nailed, actually, he was making naked, disarming the weapons of Satan on the cross. He made a public display on him, disarming him of all his weapons. So the bruise, took place through the passion of Jesus. When he was agonizing in Gethsemane, when he was being taken to Pilate, when he was being judged, when he hung on the cross. But before that, before that, before that, before Jesus goes to Gethsemane, before Jesus is taken to be judged before Jesus hung on the cross. The battle began with the seed of the woman. It was a woman. John, chapter 12. You will bruise his head and he will bruise your heel. And if Jesus is to bruise the serpent's head, the narrative follows. Then his seed will bruise the serpent's seal. If Jesus is to bruise the serpent's head, then the woman that had been bruised by the serpent, you should remember, this is a divine judgment or a backfire. When you read Genesis 3.15, it is a backfire because the serpent came to bruise the woman. So that is why the church father said sin came through the woman. But Paul makes it sure. Read your scripture well. Romans chapter 5. Sin came through man. That is it. So the woman was bruised. And Paul makes sure to tell us that she was beguiled. She was blinded. Satan used witchcraft. Eve did not eat the apple, which means did not follow the teachings of Satan because she wanted to. The enemy. Beguiled him. The enemy bruised him. Hey. That is why Jesus comes in. To cover her with the blood. Cover them with the blood. The weapon. 
And wherever there is the blood, the head of Satan is being bruised. Somebody say, the blood. The blood. So, in Genesis, Jesus gives the woman a mandate to bruise the head of the serpent. God gives Jesus a mandate to bruise the head of the serpent. Who was this woman? Many people say it's Mary. I think Mary is one of these women. Mary is the first of these women. Because she impregnated Jesus, the spirit of the assassin was chasing her. People usually say it is because of Jesus. Oh, it is not just because of Jesus. It was also because of Mary. <coughs> because Mary needs to be pregnant with the seed. That will come and bruise the head. So if you kill Mary, Christ will not come. And how does Mary respond to her call? Here I am. I am your servant. Do to me as you will. According to your word. God would use women without men's consent. Without men's approval. Without society's approval. For he is God by himself. God is not misogynist. God is not patriarchalist. My God. God is not racist. Who would chase after black people to kill them? Forgetting that football is just a game. And the power to slow gold is not in the legs of Rashford. Yes. If you are a Christian and you are part of those that are hailing insults on these three black boys, shame on you. And if you don't want to identify yourself but you go to church, and you are part of this. Shame on you. God forgive you. God will use anybody to score the goal. It is not about being black. It is not about being white. Look at the Italian, Chiellini. 34 years or something. An old man. Look at how he was defending. Look at Donnarumma. I should bring football in. Because maybe the Holy Ghost thinks that is what will get your attention. Because we want to separate church from... The football was a battleground. And Italy taught me a lesson. It's not over until the game is over. And I'm here to tell you. It's not over until the game is over. And your prosperity is not in the hands of your mother, your father, your wife. Your healing is not in the... Stop making people all powerful. It's in the hands of God. And God has given you and I a weapon. And that is what we're going to use tonight. It is to bruise. Somebody say, bruise. Bruise, bruise, bruise. Bruise in the name of Jesus. The head of the serpent. You will trample upon serpents and scorpions. Mark chapter 16. So before Jesus leaves, he breathes his Holy Spirit. On the disciples. And he tells them go into the world and preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Freely you have been given. And destroy all the works of the enemy. You will drink poison and it will not affect you tonight. Whatever poison that was injected into your bones. Your blood. Your head. Your chest. Your arm. Your leg. In the name of Jesus. Bruce. 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 Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Jesus says the poison would not have effect on you. Any poison. Poison also is symbolic of witchcraft and the works of the enemy. Any spirit of witchcraft that is working against your home, against your life, because of your ministry, by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Bruce, 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 Bruce. That is apotropaic prayers. So in my book, I argue that, okay, so in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, you have clearly understood. A prophecy was released. Jesus came to fulfill the prophecy. 
and he alone did not fulfill it. This prophecy has to do with a woman in Jesus. So let me take you to John chapter 12. And I've showed you the first woman. Thank you. God bless you. The first woman who is Mary. I watched a movie that was very, very touching. In the movie of the Passion of Jesus, when they were scourging Jesus, the mother felt the scourge. This is what we call mystic warriors. Mystic warriors. Mary was a prophet. Mary was a prophetess. Pentecostals don't like raising Mary. They get nervous. But whether you like it or not, she was chosen. She's sacred. She's a mystic warrior. The other woman we go into, look at is, how many minutes have we got? Oh, my God, time flies so fast, I can't believe. So, John chapter 12, because that is the title of my book. The book says, leave her alone. So in John chapter 12, it says from three, or not, let me start from verse one, so we understand that it is not just a woman who came to do what she did. It is mystic. What she did was prophetic. And people think she didn't know. I think she really knew what she was doing. She was a disciple of Jesus. According to Luke chapter 10, verse 39, she sat under the feet of Jesus. She knew what she was doing. She was a Hebrew. She knew what she was doing. So six days before the Passover, this narrative is found in all the four Gospels. The Gospel of Matthew, you find it in 26, chapter 26. The Gospel of Mark, you find it in chapter 14. The Gospel of um, Luke, you find it in chapter 7. And I found part of the narrative in tw chapter 22. And the Gospel of John is what I'm reading in chapter 12. So all the four have it. So it is not uh, an answer. Sam. It is not a fable. It really happened. If you ignore it, you must ignore also the passion of Jesus. You cannot talk about the gospel without talking about a woman's ministry. It is not possible. But we know that for a woman to be in ministry, it is warfare. It is warfare. And the devil is not using anyone than the church. Those who call themselves the church. And tonight, I pray at the end, you will repent. So, six days before the Passover feast, Passover feast, underline it, you cannot overlook this. Jesus, according to the book of Corinthians, is our Passover Passover talks about the sacrificial death of Jesus for humanity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. The Passover talks about Isaiah, Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity, bruised for our iniquity, bruised for our iniquity, bruised for our iniquity. He was bruised that we would not be bruised but we would become the bruises. Are you a bruiser? Say, bruise, 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 bruise the head of the serpent. My God. And we are going to see. It's not by just words. So it was the Passover feast. So it has to do with the passion of Jesus Christ. And Jesus went to Bethany where Lazarus, whom he had resurrected, lived. There Lazarus lived with his two elder sisters, Martha and Mary. So they made him a supper, underline, supper. One, we have Passover. Two, we have supper. What comes in your mind when you see Passover and you see supper? What comes on your mind? The Lord's Supper. The Holy Communion. The Lord's Table. The death of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus. The burial of Jesus. The victory of Jesus over Satan. That is what we call the Passover. So six days, where is it here? Yeah. And Martha said, 
For those of you who always imagine matter in the kitchen cooking, you got it wrong. If you see Passover, you see supper, and you see seven, it is more than what you think. The word there is diakona. Seven means she ministered at the table of the Lord. My God, something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. And Lazarus was at among those who were at table. Did you see? Passover, supper, seven, and table. So it is talking about the lost table. It's talking about the Holy Communion. It's talking about the Eucharist. So many theologians have argued that even though the Gospel of John does not have any specific narrative about Jesus and the, I mean the last, the last supper, the narrative of the last supper, they think this was a narrative of the last supper. And what is the last supper? You remind, as long as you do this, you remind of my death and resurrection. You remind the powers that be of my power over all the powers of the enemy. Something was happening at this table. And then comes the other sister, the baby Lars. So Lazarus is at the table. He's one of them, the ministers at the table with Jesus. Martha is seven. She's ministering. Diakona. She's ministering. She's also one of the ministers at the table. And Mary also comes to minister. How does she do? She took a pound of ointment of pure liquid na and poured it on the feet of Jesus and wiped it with her hair. Now look at what happens. Immediately she did this. There was something. Judas Iscariot comes in to rebook her. And the word there is a strong word. We find it in Matthew chapter 26. Jesus says, why do you trouble her? The word there means, why are you striking her? Why are you beating her? Why are you crushing her? Why are you bruising her? The words of Judas were like a club of Satan. And once I was doing my research, the other gospel says, for Judas had allowed Satan to enter him. So Judas had become an agent of Satan, the seed of the serpent. And when this woman was pouring her oil, Judas saw more than what was happening. And for him to deceive people, he just said, what a waste is it? It was not ordinary words. She was wounding the woman and the Lord sent me here tonight. Many are the women in ministry that have been wounded by the words of people. Because when you read, Judas is not the only one that allowed himself to be used by the sea, by, the, by Satan. Judas is not the only one that allowed himself to be a seed of Satan. The disciples, according to the other gospel, the other narratives. It was the disciples. It was um, Simon the leper. It was all the people that were at the table. Everyone is against a woman in ministry. And let's listen to what Jesus says. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Leave her alone is an apotropaic prayer. Can you give me the song, our prayer song? Leave her alone is an apotropaic prayer. Leave her alone is an apotropaic. What is apotropaic prayer? It's the prayer that has the power to cast out evil. And the Lord sent me here tonight and said, to every woman that has been bruised, that has been wounded, Therefore, women in ministry go through battles, challenges that are heavier than men in ministry. Their husbands, their children, their family, their loved ones, their friends. Everyone goes through demonic attack because the woman is ministry. Women ministers are 
are not like men ministers. Women ministers have a prophecy over their head to do what? First, I know the seed. God, we are all the seed of Abraham. We are all the seed of Christ. But when we talk specifically in this context about this passion of Jesus, it is the woman. It is the woman. The woman bled with Christ. The woman was buried with Christ. The woman cried with Christ. The woman stayed under the cross with Christ. And therefore Jesus says, woman, behold thy son. He tells the son, behold are you beholding women in ministry? Dear woman, listen to me. Maybe you didn't know. Women in ministry. When a woman, what was Mary doing? She was ministering. And the spirit of the assassin, because if you read, it said, and they wanted to kill Jesus and kill Judah. The spirit of the assassin have been harassing some women in ministry. And all you want to do is to stop. Don't stop. For your service is your club. It is the weapon you are. She just poured on the fiscal. It was pouring oil. Now in the realms of the spirit. She was fulfilling Genesis chapter 3. She was crushing the head of the enemy. And the enemy came to crush through Jesus. And if Jesus had not intervened. Because if you read later they said. The Pharisees decided to kill Lazarus. This was what was happening. Jesus' word, leave her alone, was a rebuke. It was like the, prophet, the priest, Zachariah, ministering. In the book of Zachariah chapter 3, Mary was ministering. And Satan comes to stand on his right hand and say, he doesn't deserve to minister. And God sends an angel to say, the Lord rebuke you. Leave her alone means the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. And in Zachariah, God says, the Lord will book you. It means the Lord censure you. The Lord silence you. Don't tell a woman to be silent. Jesus silenced and condemned a man who was condemning a woman because she was ministering. And Jesus commended the woman. And Jesus said it was intended. It was already arranged from the creation of the world that you will be the pastor of that church, woman of God. Listen to me. It was ordained from the... I was part of an organization where they don't uh, uh, ordain women as pastors. You will be ordained as an evangelist. It is a church thing. It is a human thing. It is not a Jesus thing. But I came here. Always one hour is not enough. So we're going to pray with the four minutes, three minutes that is left. Leave her alone. Anytime you say leave her alone, it is like saying the Lord rebook you. Because in the book of Zachariah, the Lord rebook you was Satan who was telling God. He should not minister. Zachariah should not minister. And he does the same thing with Moses in the book of Jude 1. And in the same book where the enemy was contending that Moses will not go to heaven. That Moses' body will become the devil's property. The angel says, the Lord rebook you. So to you, woman of God who is listening to me, let this be your battle axe from tonight. Say, leave me alone. Leave me alone. In the name of Jesus, leave my husband alone. Leave my children alone. Leave my ministry alone. Leave my property alone. Leave my community alone. Leave us alone in the name of Jesus. I was asking, Mary, why didn't you use your oil and allowed Lazarus to die? And Mary said, I had learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. Leave her alone is not only a portrayal. That cast the enemy away. It is also therapeutic. Leave her alone means Jesus is healing your wounds. Jesus will restore your marriage. Jesus will bring your children back home. Jesus will restore your children. Jesus will restore your property. Jesus will restore your honor. Jesus will restore you to your position. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And tonight, let the accuser, because that is what Judas did, like the accuser Satan in the book of Zachariah he stood by the right hand of the woman therefore tonight as I decree 
any spirit of the assassin, any spirit of the accuser that is speaking against you tonight. Let another take their place. Let the Holy Ghost take their place. Let the angels of God take their place. Let them favor you. Let them protect you. Let them restore you. So that is my message for you. When you see, leave her and go. It means the Lord will book you and kill you. And the Lord will restore you. See you same time next week. Pray with us. And pray with Psalm 109. I will see you next Wednesday. This is me. Join Lady Apostle Diana Adua on the Good News TV and on Facebook every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. BSD and on Sundays from 7 to 8 p.m. BSD for a live virtual prayer camp encounter dub. It's a new day. Awake your dawn through the word. Worship. Warfare. On the Good News TV, that's www.goodnewstv.org.uk and on Facebook, Lady AP Diana Adu Cristo. What does the Bible actually say about women in ministry? If you have ever asked yourself this question, you can find the answer in this book. A book written by Diana Adu. Author Diana Adu is a devoted Christian, well educated, and well known advocate for God's word to be declared to the world by men and women. With a comprehensive background in biblical study, worldwide ministry, and philanthropic endeavors, she shares her personal experiences regarding women in ministry. If you are a woman who has been stymied from releasing your full potential, yearning to share your God-given leadership role in the church, this book will empower you to launch out with God's blessing. And if you are a man who has often wondered if your thoughts on women in ministry are truly righteous, this book will be a revelation and blessing. Leave Her Alone is now available on Amazon Bookstore.